Welcome to my channel. We're going to value the company Snap-on and look at its financial ratios. Snap-on was founded in 1920, 100 years ago. It is a designer, manufacturer, and marketer of high-end tools and equipment for use in cars, boats, railroads, and much more. Snap-on also distributes lower-end tools under the brand name Blue Point. Their main competitors are Matco, Mac Tools, and Cornwall Tools. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $8.23 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they trade at $151 a share. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull the actual free cash flow. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Next we're going to pull the net income. That's on the income statement. That's the profit and loss for the business. And we'll take four years of that and put it into the model. Next I'm going to pull the revenue which are the sales for each year. That's also on the income statement. Let's look at the numbers. They are positive consistent and free cash flow each year so that's great the net income is also positive and consistent and their sales are fairly consistent they haven't been growing too much but everything looks really good for the model so far let's look at a capital structure we need to figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows they pay 49 million dollars of interest on their debt that's on the income statement let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have we go to the liability section and current debt of $202 million. That's debt due within 12 months. And long term debt, that's $946 million. That's debt due after 12 months. Since interest payments on debt are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. We'll go back to the income statement. The income before tax is $922 million, and the income tax is $211 million. So their effective tax rate is 23%. Cost of debt is 3.3%. Now we need to figure out the cost of equity. Let's get the beta. That's how you figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile a stock is relative to the market. And the beta isn't too bad, 1.37. So the stock is a little more volatile than the market. The lower the beta, the lower the cost of equity. We also need the current assets. Let's go back to the balance sheet. We need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are 2.4 billion. Let's see what that is made up of. 184 million of cash, 1.3 billion of receivables. That's how much money other companies owe this company and 760 million of inventory. Let's get their current liabilities. That's also part of the current ratio calculation. That's 947 million. And let's see what that is. 202 million of current debt, 198 million of accounts payable. That's how much this company owes other companies. 24 million of taxes payable. That's how much money they owe the government in taxes. 287 million of accrued liabilities. These are expenses a company has incurred but hasn't paid yet. Deferred revenue of 55 million. This is when a company receives payment for a product or service before it has been delivered yet. When they actually deliver the product, then they'll take it off of deferred revenue and book it onto the income statement as revenue. And they have 68 million of other. Equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet, that's 3.4 billion. And that's 67 million of common stock, 4.8 billion of retained earnings. Retain earnings is all your prior net incomes minus all your prior dividends and accumulated other comprehensive income of negative 507 million. Let's go back to the income statement and get their EBIT earnings before interest and taxes 962 million. Let's look at a capital structure. They have 25% debt. Cost of debt is 3.3%. 75% equity. Cost of equity is almost 13%, and the WAC is 10.4%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. 
and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 8.8 .8 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $8.5 billion. We divide that by 54 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of 155. So it's trading really close to my calculated value. The stock is trading at a 3% discount. So it is a buy according to my model. Let's see what simply Wall Street has. They're at 187. So they're saying the stock is undervalued. The reason simply Wall Street's number is usually more than mine is because my model looks at how much debt a company has and reduces the terminal value based on a percentage of debt. And simply Wall Street doesn't do that. Let's look at the historical stock price and see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it's been pretty steady for the past few years. That's why they don't have a high beta. It did drop at coronavirus, but it came almost right back up to where it was before. So I would expect this stock to do pretty well during coronavirus. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a good PE, 11.9. The median PE in the market is 15. Their price of sales is also good. The median is 1.8. It's a little better than theirs. And their price to book is also good at 2.4. The median is also 2.4. This number above the median is the average, 5.8. Price to earnings is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15. They're at 11.9. So investors are paying about $12 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5. They're at 2.0. So investors are paying $2 for $1 of sales. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.4. So investors are paying $2.40 for $1 book value. Good current ratio 2.5, the average is 1.8. The median in the market is 1.3. ROE is good at 20%. The median is 13%. The average is 8%. And interest coverage ratio is really good at almost 20. The median is 4.1 and the average in the entire market is 13.4. So current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2 so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20% and they're at 20% so that looks good. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 20, so they can easily cover their interest payments. They're operating pretty profitably, it seems. So this is the only company I did in the industry tools and accessories, so I can't compare them to anyone. So let me know what you think of the video, leave a comment, I'll definitely answer. If you wanna see me value more companies and subscribe, thanks for watching.